Okay, we are live episode 95. We have Kelly Lee from Rowdy Bars. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Mark. Out of 95 episodes, this is the first time we don't have a service provider. Usually there's a third person. That person had something come up last minute. No big deal. It happens. Uh, so you and I are going to wrap. Uh, <laughs> we are going to get right into this. Give us the story. When did Rowdy Bars start? Rowdy Bar started out of my kitchen in 2013, and then we launched with the co-packer in January of 2018. Okay, that's a, that's a so five, five year gap there. So we're going to find out a little bit of information what happened. Uh, in 13, you're making bars. What were uh, key ingredients and how did you get started? Why did you choose them? Um, I got started because I was having my own digestive health issues. I was um, struggling with gallstones and um, was later diagnosed with hypothyroid. So I was changing my diet and um, looking at some things. I've always been a health nut, so I love to um, explore new ingredients. I came across the Yukon root and uh, started cooking with it, baking with it. My husband and I are backpackers. So I created a bar for us to take backpacking using the Yukon root as my natural sweetener rather than um, brown rice syrup or dates um, and noticed a difference in my overall digestion because it is a, um, it's an FOS. So it's a form of a prebiotic. It, it contains a prebiotic in it. So um, just started baking with it. It became the ingredient that is now the staple in Rowdy Bars. Got it. Okay. So it's 13. Um, let's skip ahead a little bit. Are you still producing in your kitchen in let's say 2015, 2016? And if so, how did you package up the product and where were you selling it at the time? So yes, I was doing it out of the kitchen. Um, I had a cottage food permit and I had um, these bag baggies made where they were sealed on one end and I was va uh, vacuum sealing them on the other end. So I would stick the bars in the bag and I actually would vacuum seal them and then I would sell them. At the time I worked for a local hospital, St. Mary's. I was the marketing director for um, the fitness center and the cancer rehab center. And so I was selling them to customers and clients at the, at the um, fitness center. And then um, I call 2016 the year of nose because that's when I realized that I had um, something and started looking into co-packers and I got told no everywhere I looked because I was too small. And, um, and then in eventually in 2017, I found a co-packer that was willing to do small runs and do a test trial with me. And that's how we got started. For those that are using a co-packer, at least trying to call co-packers, um, give us a sense of what a small run looked like. When you're calling, are you telling them that you need 2,000 bars, 5,000 bars, 10,000 bars? Give us that storyline there. Yeah, so the um, for us to participate in this, it was a 15,000 run. So we had to have 15,000 bars. That was a small run. 15,000 bars. Uh, okay. And, and, you know, for those that are watching it there, they could be in beverage and they could be maybe doing bars or cookies or any other type of product. And, and they hear a, a lot of the same uh, as far as minimums. Um, I just got off a call with somebody who is also dealing with the same thing. Um, let's get into that then. So you finally find a co-packer, which you can, there are those that will work with you uh, and lower minimums. It's all how you're selling you're always selling. People know right. that's my theme. Um, you uh, finally get into to one. How did that look? Where did you take the bars at that time and start selling them? So we started with the chocolate coconut cashew. That was our first bar. Um, and we launched with them in um, December. We, we had our final run in December of 2017. 2018, we launched on our website. That was it. Um, I'm in Reno, Nevada. So I went to a local retailer. It was called Scolari's. They still have two stores, but at the time they had seven. And so um, I actually ended up, that was my first retailer. Um, she actually saw, I, I was on the news as a local brand and um, she saw the, the buyer saw it and she reached out to me and we scheduled a meeting. I went in, saw her, they gave it, gave me a chance. Um, I, she believed in me. And to this day, Lori Nellis, she's um, somebody that gave me a chance that kind of took me um, on that path of getting into retail. I got into all seven retail stores. I launched in January. By March, I was in all Scolari's. So um, that just kind of started the, 
the momentum and we got into our, we just started selling online. That was our main place. And then I just started tackling all of the retailers that I could possibly tackle. Got it. Okay. Give us a sense of how you're investing in the business during all that. I think it's important for, for those that are starting out. There's that big window there. It's a five-year window just for a sense of it. Um, are you investing you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars? And if so, where's the money coming from? You don't have to get granular and you can answer any way you'd like. But value to those that are listening who are going through the same thing. You know, they're borrowing 10,000 here. Maybe they saved up 50,000. It is expensive no matter which way you cut it. Uh, even if you're, you know, on the side of starting really small, which I talk about often, just give us a little bit of that story as well so we, so we can piece this together. So in that five-year gap, I was putting my own money in. I was working full-time. I was putting my own money in, um, and I didn't even realize how much I had in it. Like, I was just going for it. I had a little bit of savings. I had money that I was making as, as a living. I, I have a husband, so luckily he's supportive. And um, we were just putting it in, not really consciously aware of how much I was putting in. Um, when I, I was getting my MBA also at UNR, I actually submitted for a, um, it was called the Adventure Fund. We, we won they were going to give us the, the funds. Well, when we looked at the contract, it didn't, it didn't pan out. So at that time I had family who saw that the potential was there. I had family come in and that's when family came in and has been supportive. And so we are hundred percent family owned and funded and organically grown. Okay. Um, and so again, that provides some context. Again, you, you now we're going to fast forward a little bit, but going from let's say 18 to 2020, um, there is a, probably a bit of a change in the business, at least how it's made up, um, people involved. Now you got family money and, and, you know, things are happening, right? It becomes pretty serious. Um, where are you at, let's just say, going out of 18 and, and kind of coming up to 20? What does the business look like? Um, so in 2000. Um, 19, we, uh, we were, we were still getting into retailers. We got into Rayleigh's, we got into some other re bigger retailers. We, we got with distributors, um, to 2020, um, we got selected to, or we got put into Sprouts. So that was huge for us in 2020. Um, and so the momentum just kept, kept going family it, money keeps coming in and we're, you know, supporting it. And, um, so it's definitely not easy. So now we're in a position where um, we are looking for investors. So um, we knew that time would come, but we were trying to do it as much as possible for as long as possible with just keeping it in the family. And um, now we're at that stage where we feel like it's time to bring a, uh, an outside investor in. So just mainly for the resource and the, and the connections as well. Got it. Okay. So again, it just it provides such good context. Um, the is you're getting into sprouts and Rayleigh's. I mean, people don't rep, you know really understand it's an expense. It's expensive, right? Yes. Um, there's slotting fees of, of any sort. It doesn't matter how you cut it. It could be a case. It could be monetary and the like. But at the end of the day, it's money that that you need. And and, um, and as far as a team, what does the team look like? Is it just yourself? Do you have four or five people operational? Give us the give us a sense there. So for the longest time, it was me working out of my home, um, and then we actually brought somebody in to kind of help us with some operations that didn't last very long. Um, but he, he was definitely, um, instrumental in getting us into an, a new position. And, um, then I, after that situation, I ended up bringing in family. So now, uh, it's myself and I have my uh, younger sister who does all of the marketing and my older sister who does our helps with the accounting. Okay, That's so the it's, a, it's, it's the trio uh, of sisters. Yep. Okay, yes. and you guys just sort of divvied up. And again, is it just you three operating this thing right now? Yes, so the three of us do everything. We all wear a lot of hats, even though we have our designated locations as far as the business goes. But we're all out there when we get large orders, we're all out there packing orders and, and doing logistics. Um, we are all in here you know, kind of figuring out our next marketing strategy. So um, it's a very team effort. We do have an outside sales team that I love and are wonderful and, and a brokerage team that we work with and we're very happy with them as well. So that that's our extended team. Got it. Do you want to shout them out or is that just- is I would love to. So Thrive Natural Sales is our okay. national sales team. Okay. They're awesome. And then we work with Dirty Hands um, Brokerage yep. for our um, 
Pacific Northwest and California um, uh, retail. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, now, how about direct to consumer? Just give a sense there. Are you on Amazon and do you have your own website as well? So we do. Yes, we are on Amazon and we are on our, we, we function mostly through our, on our own website. Got it. And so, oh, so your majority of your direct to consumer business through the website, not through Amazon. Correct. Got it. Could you give us an idea of why that is, you think? I mean, I've been talking openly that I'm really bullish on Amazon. So yeah. for us, it's the inverse. But I, I just talk openly because you do what works best for your group, right? Your brand, right. your organization. Um, give us a sense why it's working that way for you. Um, you know, I think what it was is I wasn't very experienced in the Amazon world. And when I first launched, um, I think I went through a couple of... Um, insecure relationships, I should say, with um, Amazon agencies. And um, we didn't have the best support and I didn't really have the time to like dive into Amazon. So um, we ended up having some issues. And so we just focused on our own website. We are just recently relaunching into Amazon. So um, we, we think that it'll be a good location for us, a good platform. We just have to get the right support and I think we have that now. Cool. Uh, yeah, every story is going to be its own and you definitely should be exploring and hopefully not spending a lot to get there. Um, it, uh, I, it, again, it's just one of these topics I, I'm open about. Um, direct to consumer can be a very expensive business and you can go down this rabbit hole of, of spending um, and not recognizing how much you actually are losing uh, and what I would really consider investing, I want to use a better word maybe to make people feel better about it, um, but at the end of the day, it is cash. And so um, I'm a big believer in focusing on what, what is working and finding that as soon as possible. Um, where are we at now? It's 2021. It's June. Things are opening back up, feeling good. Kids are at camp. There's no mask. I walked into a <laughs> restaurant yesterday. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, what's up with you guys now? What is what does it look like? Where are you going over the over? Let's say the summer. We're so excited. We have a lot happening. So we just launched um, in May. We launched into Save Martin Lucky stores. Um, of course, we're we're saturated in Southern California, but this month we launched. We we were picked up by Kroger and we were launched in the Ralph's division in Southern California. So that was exciting for us. Um, we just learned too that our top three SKUs were accepted by Whole Foods. Um, so we'll be part of the reset in August. So that's a really exciting um, news for us. We also got picked up by Hagen's in the Pacific Northwest and Molly's Market in um, Northern California. So we've got a lot of expansion um, with retail. Um, we're going to keep plugging away with the Amazon. We're not giving up there. Um, even though we've had some hurdles to get over, um, we're going to keep jumping them. And then uh, of course, keep driving our direct to consumer through our own website. Which region is that for Whole Foods? Um, Northern California. Oh, mm -hmm. sweet. Very cool. So I'll, I'll be grabbing some up here. I, I'm oh, great. Go NorCal. Um, so, all right. I like that. It's, it's, this is a, a a nice storyline. Again, it's 2013. A lot of people don't realize, wow, it's, you know, you're talking about eight years of doing this, right? Uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing overnight and you're constantly building and building and then you're adding, okay, this retailer, that retailer, all, all while uh, money has to come into the business. Uh, it's, it's an important piece, everyone. Um, let's talk about closing this up as far as where you guys want to go. I do see the bars I think I see a mix, which might be okay. new, meaning like yes. you, you make, you make, it's something you make at home, right? Get the kids yes. involved and start making some products. Or is this a new product line? And is this what we're going to be looking for, let's say in the next year or two, as far as additional SKUs? Absolutely. So we've got the five bar flavors um, now, and then we just launched, this is our collagen protein powder. So it's only got six ingredients. Um, we still have the Yukon powder in there. So you're still getting the digestive health. Um, that's our, that's our big thing. Um, and we have a uh, mixed greens that we're going to be coming out with and a berries mix. That's going to be part of this line of extension. We're in the process of um, reformulating the peanutty dark chocolate into a keto form. So it'll be our low, low carb. 
So um, then we'll have two flavors that are um, low carb keto uh, friendly uh, selections. And then the rest are um, paleo and, and, and clean. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Line extensions and the like, again, just, so that's a protein powder. Yes. Not a, not a cookie mix. Okay, cool. No, no, not a cookie mix. It's just okay, snickerdoodle cool. cookie is the flavor. I like it. Uh, you, yeah, know I'm, you know I'm into it. You know I'm into it. Um, <laughs> very cool. Good story. I appreciate all the context. You know, it, it pieces things together for those that are starting, those that are right in the middle, those that are scaling. Um, progress, right? You're just building. Right. It's just one okay. block at a time. One block yeah. at a time. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And I like to say I roll with the punches. We are, yes, yes, we all roll with the punches. The punches yeah, <laughs> we all roll with the punches. Good for you. Uh, congrats on everything. I appreciate you being on. Be well, be healthy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark.